Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. Today we're going to be installing this brand new Proteus consumer unit. You can see I've already done it, but we're going to run through the process. I will talk you through my methods, the things I like and don't like about this board, and some of the nuances around the particular installation method selected and why. But without further ado, let's dive into it and see what this is all about. So before we get into the thrust of installing this consumer unit, I thought I would take you through it. It's new to industry, so it's not been out very long. They're now available on CEF Online, which is where I got this one from. It is the 14-way variety, and it's from Proteus. We're going to pop it out of the box, and we'll take a look at what this is like. Move the camera around, because you can see the old variety of Proteus boards up there that we've installed loads of. And they were really good, but there is some subtle differences here that I think improve this no end. And one is just the way it looks, sort of the shape of it, and the fact that the lid is flush on the front as well, so it's not got this lip that overhangs. So we've been caught out, I say we, I have been caught out before putting trunk in, put it up to these consumer units, and subsequently not been able to get the lid on. With solar stuff, we're generally using larger size trunkings around a domestic consumer unit than you might be used to just because of the nature of all the cabling and things that we've got going on and if you look back in my channel I'm not making that up it is something that I've actually done and mentioned this is now gone on the board the other feature is you've got this lid which is retractable so you can if you want um, take it out and then do your labeling I'll show you when we've got it on the wall because it's hard to do whilst holding it but um, the, but there's that as well. There's some other features inside that we'll have a look at as we um, move through the video. The knockouts that come in this, so you can see there's a range of knockouts on the top. But most interesting, on the back, we've got this row of what I'm calling the Instagram knockouts. So there's lots of people, me included, who like popping the odd board out that looks um, money and tidy than 90% of the rest of the time we do, we do our job and no one ever sees it. So there's questions as to why we bother. However, they're there for us that, that like to do that. We've got the bigger knockouts at the back as well when you bring in lots of cables in together and each board comes with one of these. You can buy them as loose items separately uh, if you're wanting to make use of all three holes, but that's a move away from grommet strip, which is a huge plus point. You've got all your mounting holes on the back. We'll have a little chat about that in a minute. Inside the board, just to mention early on in the video, the main switch has followed the path of the M2 range and there is dual terminals on there. We'll have a look at while we're fitting it and there's some other changes in the way the, the bus bars configured, still mounts in the same way, and other bits and pieces that we'll look at as well. But aesthetically, from the outset, I think this has a lot of improvements on the prior range, and we'll see how it all comes together as we move through the video. Just to say on the sides, there isn't actually any knockouts for your tail glands, so you would need to cut those in, and there is some on the top and bottom. Just in case I didn't mention it, oh, before we do move on, in terms of the cardboard box, and you'll see here I've already cut the, the back out, there is a template. So if you're mounting this onto a masonry wall and you want to mark your fixing holes, you can do that. The whole box is recyclable, it's all cardboard, all the packaging's cardboard as well. So there's nothing that's um, damaging for the environment. And it's just a, a nice touch, I think, that there is a template there, especially for your holes. You see I've marked out the Instagram holes because we're going for that on this install. Um, and it's just a way of making your penetrations through the wall if you're in advance at that stage. So if you're doing a new build, for example, it's a really good way of being able to get the cables where you want them. So they're coming straight through into the board. And then you can do any fire sealing that might be necessary much more easily as well. So let's take a look through the time lapse. And as you can see here, we're just going to pop the front cover off. There's a little cardboard package inside there with a spare blank. And the knockouts are removable from the back. Don't be using your best screwdrivers for this, as I just did very naughtily in removing those. I'm just using grommets on the back of this one. And I'll explain a bit more about that later on. And you can see we've aligned our holes up directly with the holes out of the wall as well, just to keep the opening up, opening into the wall as uh, narrow as possible. I'm using the Klein tools level on the top of there just to make sure we get this plumb and square. There is a little mini spirit level in the back of the consumer unit. However, I'm never a fan of those, to be fair. I know most brands pop them in. I'm still to this day not sure why, but it does play out as level in this particular case. It was on the money. So I'm using uh, my weir uh, croppers to strip these larger twin and earth cables and then the Nipex twin and earth stripping tool to take off the 2.5 and 1.5 mil cables at the end of the consumer unit. So at the front, on the right hand side, we've got our main high power items. So we've got our air source heat pump, we've got our 
PV system and we've also got an EV charge point as well. Further down the circuits, we've just got basic lighting and power. So we'll pop in our sleeving over the top here. And uh, again, I, this is just how I do it. There's various methods you could use, but I prefer to get the cables all stripped, pop the sleeving on to a set length, and then work away dressing the board from there. I've shared other examples on the channel before. Um, sometimes I take a different approach, but this tends to be how I go about it. So once we've got all the sleeving on, we can start look at dressing the CPCs away. And it's sometimes a bit easier to get the, the DIN rail out of the way. I did just drop it down a little bit here to get some of the um, CPCs under and around the um, little supporting bracket that's in the back of the consumer unit. You could fish it under and back up, but this is the quick way of doing it in my opinion. So I'm just looping those CPCs round, dressing them up the back in a similar fashion because we're going for that Instagram look on this one. And I am trying to leave a little bit of extra length on the cables as well, just in case there's any reworking of them that's needed. Um, you always want to leave a bit of slack somewhere for the next person, even when you are going for those super duper neat finishes, or at least as neat as I can do in this case. Leaving a bit of space between the high power circuits and the standard power and lighting. It's not really for heat dissipation, it was just the way the cables enter into the board. It made sense to do that to allow for neater wiring. Um, you do want to consider if you've got continuous loads through your overcurrent protected devices for over an hour uh, lined up alongside each other, you may need to derate them because of that. It's unlikely in most domestic consumer units and it's a bit of a thing that's blown up on social media through old wives tales and words of mouth but when you actually delve into it it's usually pretty unlikely if you position your circuits in a sensible order rather than just going from the highest power to the lowest power you'll generally have natural spacing amongst them anyway for it not to be a thing so you can see at the start here we've got the taller protective devices and this is the type b single module rcbo which is super duper handy in the proteus range that it is just one module wide and we've got that alongside the afdd which also has rcd and overcurrent protection built in again super duper handy and that's covering off some of the socket circuits where we need to make sure that's provided on our installations these days we're getting the neutral fly leads just popped up there. I did shorten one down. I'll mention that a bit later on as well. But I try to avoid it where possible. But we are making an exception on this one of trying to keep things as neat and tidy as possible. The new range of blanks from Proteus are brilliant. They map out perfectly with the overcurrent protected devices. However, there was only one in the box. And I wasn't aware it was a thing. I'm sure I've been told and just forgotten. So I'm using the normal Proteus blanks in alongside them. And they just sit a little bit further back and they're not branded. So it doesn't look quite as good but um, they do serve the purpose of filling the hole. So we're now popping our RCBOs in there. We've got a ring final circuit, a boiler circuit, and a circuit running off to feed out to a radial set of sockets. And we're dressing those in as neatly as we can again, popping some slack behind the DIN rail. It is quite roomy back there in this board. So there's plenty of space to try and tuck a bit of length down, ready for the next person should they need it. And again, just dressing those cables away as neatly as we can. We don't just want to be ramming the cables behind the DIN rail into some sort of rat's nest. You want a prospect to be able to draw them out for testing or if you're making an adjustment inside the board without snagging on every other conductor that's in there. So there is a bit of a working method to that rather than just ramming everything down the back. And I can't promise I've not done that in the past. So we can see the lighting ones at the end, there's three B6 RCBOs, and these RCBOs from Proteus are all type A, they're all double pole switch neutral, and they are bi-directional as well as standard. They're just updating the range to have the markings on that are required in terms of regulations. However, as Proteus are one of the few brands that had this baked into their product since the get-go, before these cool super duper markings came to light, they do have a range of devices out there in the wild waiting to be sold on the shelves and there's nothing wrong with them it seems a shame to have them wasted just because there's not the right marking on them uh, so the data sheets are your friend on that front and i'm just dressing these away again using the weir strippers uh, weir croppers sorry point of note with the impact driver there's no impact in taking place it is just a loose spin up they're not even close to tight and that's just the way i prefer to do things go along after and carry out the testing and the talking. It's not going to be done on this one, as I'll explain later on in the video. Uh, controversial statement there, maybe. But yeah, it's, it's one of them, you get a knack for it. I wouldn't recommend going at it. We don't want any dugger duggers on those terminals whatsoever. So you probably just watched that time lapse through now of me fitting this, and it's a great board to fit, in fairness. There's lots of space behind the, 
the DIN rail. So with this, I've tried to leave slack behind there. I know with these Instagram style boards, there's not a lot of slack on the cables for any redressing in the future. So I've tried to counter against that in the way I've got as much cable as I can out of sight behind the DIN rail. Neatly, you're not wrapped around each other and snagged. There's plenty of room behind there. So I've got, got some tucked away. Um, the labeling on the bars, I like the way that the neutral bar has been moved across ever so slightly. So you can see here there's loads of space now above this main switch. We don't actually have a supply to go into this board presently, but when we do, there's loads of room to work. Um, so if you're doing first fix and then your second fix within a new build, for example, sometimes the supply is not there to do your final testing and put your metering connection in. You know, that's an easy add-on later on. Real nice, simple solution. They've also changed the way this buzz bar is covered. I'll bring you in closer and have a little chat through that in a minute. Just wanted to mention fire sealing on these. I've just used grommets into this um, wall here. We are currently stood in a warehouse and this is just a partition. It's a training area as well. And this is gonna be on and off the wall a lot. So we didn't want any mastic. I didn't want to waste useful fire sealing grommet uh, glands, uh, grommets, not glands are they? Just these little fire sealing grommets grommets uh, on there when it's kind of wasted. So this is just kind of for a training environment where people are going to come in and have a go at popping this board on and off the wall a few times. I'm just making this video really as kind of instruction that's hopefully going to help them and to, to share my skills or lack of them with those of you following along on YouTube if you find it interesting. Again, it's not paid or sponsored. I've bought everything you can see in here. Came from CEF online. online. I think I ordered it last night at 5.55, cut off 6 p.m. And by nine o'clock this morning, it was here ready to install. So you can't say fairer than that. I think the box for the board, I'm going to say it was around 40 to 50 pound. So not expensive. And we got a few of the smaller four-way options with the SPDs built in. So you can see you've got your buzzbar mounted SPD here. And that does just fit in wherever you want in the board. Then you're out to your neutral and your earth only. The line's taken from that buzzbar mounting. You can get them... Um, with those built in and I think they're like 50 quid. It's next to nothing for what you get, a little four-way board with an SPD and they look really, really nice. So we will um, pop the front cover on and have a look at it. For those of you who often ask questions around talking, around testing, around um, the cables coming through the wall in terms of fire sealing, all of that is taken in hand by electricians out doing their job. It, it should be a given really, um, but it's not visibly in place here because I'm not running through testing, talking terminals, we're not fire sealing, so as I say, this is probably going to come straight off the wall and um, it's kind of pointless. But if you want to see any of that, we've got loads of content on the channel where we've done installations in consumers' properties. So you can go off and have a look at that being done if you wish. Otherwise, I'll pop the lid on and show you what it looks like on the wall. So I thought I'd bring you in a little bit closer for a nursery on the wall. You can see we've got our washers in there. There's plenty of fixing holes. There is a little spirit level in the back of there. I don't know about any of you, but I never use them when they come in these boards because... They're so tiny and I don't like relying on them, but it did play out as accurate compared to the climb tools level that you may have seen earlier on in the in the time lapse. You've got loads of entry points. You can see there's knockouts all along the bottom, knockouts all along the top. I've used these lower down ones in the back and we'll talk through a bit of that if you haven't already. These larger ones also are in the back. I popped them out just in case anyone's coming to do something afterwards. It's always easier to not have them in the way. I know people like to try and maintain the integrity of the boards. However, if you've got a wall surface behind, it's more useful to get rid of them than not, in my opinion. And there is lots of misunderstanding around fire compartmentation and fire propagation from consumer units that has perhaps been misunderstood by parts of industry. Uh, so there is some things to consider with all of that, uh, but that's for another video. Uh, but as you can see, we've got our... Um, B40 in here. So this is the type B um, RCBO and that's for your heat pumps. So we've got that in there covering those off. Lots of those heat pumps now are saying they want type B. So this is a single module from Proteus. It's still got your overcurrent protection, your RCD protection in there that you need, but it's the type B variety. And this one is 10KA rated and you can see it has got Proteus's bi-directional logo on there to dictate that that will allow the flow of energy in both directions if you wanted to use that on a solar system for example. Then got our AFDD here which again has got the type A RCD built into it as well. This one is for some socket circuits that are maybe high risk. Before we move on to the regular mini RCBOs and again all of these are bi-directional, they're type A, they're double pole switch neutral, whatever your terminology flavour of choice is there and they're all sat there. I do like this new 
blanking plate that's from Proteus. I'm going to have to find out where you get those from because I'm still on these old style Proteus blanks and these look a lot nicer. When you're in, when you look at that in there, they all line up nice and flush. There's no little drop back. They're the same shade and colour. And I just think that's going to look a lot nicer when we get a row of those in there to match with it. Uh, again, just so the cable's tucked down the back, but if you look at it from this angle, it looks nice if you're going over the top. You can see where everything's kind of been popped down as far as I can get it to leave a bit of length on those. I was working with existing fly leads on the RCBOs, so they kind of are what they are. I did cut a couple down again, and that's the issue if you cut these fly leads to length and then go and use them somewhere else, as we often do here. Um, you're kind of limited to what's left rather than perhaps what you need. So generally, and those of you who've watched the channel a lot, you'll know this, I try and leave them full length and tuck them out of sight somewhere. But this was just a bit of an experiment to um, show one of these boards. I know Sam Featherston at, at Oval loves doing boards like this, so really it was primarily for him just to try and uh, get onto his train there of doing these Instagram style boards and um, bringing your cables in nice and short to look pretty. I've gone for that on this one. So I said we'd have a show of the, the lid coming off. On one side, there's kind of a fixed lug. On this side, there's this little toggle that you just pull, and then the whole front just comes off. So if you see that in there, just pull the other side of that. Lid removes away, pop it to a side, and then you can do all your labeling, and uh, you haven't got the lid flapping about in your face. No need for any magnets or faffing around like that. Just pop the lid out, remember to put it back on at the end. <coughs> So I hope you found that useful running through installing this Proteus consumer unit. They're available at every single CEF branch in the UK or CEF online. We use that more than not because of where we're located. We're not really close to a CEF branch in the rural area we are. It's like 25 minutes to Brid or 25 minutes to Beverly and it's sometimes just easier to get it, get it shipped here, especially when you can order it at five to six on a night and then before 10 o'clock the next day, it's with you wherever you need it. That's unbelievable, to be fair. Uh, but this, I think, looks really nice. It's a much nicer shade of white. If we show you the two together, so you can see the different shades. That was more of a magnolia, and I guess it was of its age back in the early 2000s, um, when that was all the rage in most new build houses. It would have matched in with the, the paint. We've gone for a more whiter, fresher look in modern times. And I think this fits the bill nicely. Like I say, the front lid with its rounded corners all on there. This um, looks really good when you've got your matching blanks that I've established through the course of this video I now need to source from somewhere. Just to point out, if you want, this P can be removed and you can pop a lock with a key in as well. Um, and otherwise, absolutely brilliant. There is, before we end it, I'll show you, a label sheet that comes with it. So the label sheet has all your usual uh, markings we expect today, so your, your air source heat pumps and solar and whatnot. So if you're stuck without your label printer, this will get you out of jail. And then on the back, it's got all of the, the fixings, the cable entry methods, and it tells you your torque values as well for the terminals and the main capacity sizes of your protective devices too. So all that information is on there in the sheet out the box, which is another nice thing to have close to hand when we're installing it. We don't want to be having to rifle through the internet to try and find a data sheet. If you've got any questions about this, do drop them in below and I'll do my best to answer. Um, otherwise, we'll see you on the next one.